Welcome to the kingdom. Uh, we're back into race season, race build season. I always know when you guys start working on your cars because about halfway through January, I start getting messages like crazy on Facebook. My messenger just goes nuts. It's like there's probably one every morning when I wake up from somebody somewhere in the United States, sometimes it's Canada, that have a question about something. Uh, tire sizes, transmissions, cage installs. <clears throat> but we've had a lot this year about front bumper. Um, front bumper, front nose cone, uh, which we've covered with the Cobalts more than once. Uh, you gotta go back in the archive a little bit to find the stuff, but there's it's there. Me building the front bumper for the Cobalts, um, hanging the nose pieces, it, it's on there for the Cobalts. Um, but we have to do it on an RSX now. Uh, uh, my buddy Ryan dropped this car off. We put a cage in this car last year. Uh, he wants to put an aftermarket nose on the car, which means forming a bumper to fit the nose. So, you get to take the ride with me this time. From nothing to the aftermarket nose. So, this we're going to go step by step here and how you uh, figure out what you're doing here with this stuff. Um, this is the 5 Star Grand Prix nose. Um, I already riveted it together here in the center. I just did it a minute ago. I can actually give you the part number. Hold on one second. 360410 is the part number for the 5 Star Race Car Body's Grand Prix nose. Okay? This is the nose a lot of the guys use for the RSX. Um, it's kind of the same shape as the RSX nose, so it's the closest you're going to get because they don't make an RSX nose. Um, so a friend of ours runs this nose on his RSX, so that's what Ryan bought. Um, after looking at pictures of how our buddy Chris mounted his, it looks like he went right, he overlapped the fender with the nose and riveted it right to the outside of the fender, and Ryan's okay with that. So I can tell you right now, that's what we're doing with this car. Um, we'll trim this lip here off so that this front piece is a little more flexible and then we should be able to form it right to the fender here and attach it. Um, Ryan doesn't want it attached with rivets so I don't know. I'll probably use some quarter 20s. Put a couple quarter 20s, two or three quarter 20s here. Maybe do some fender washers or something. Um, right here, we'll bolt this nose on here and then I'll probably have to come off the bumper with something to hold it to. But uh, that is the bumper that came off of the car. And um, he welded some stuff to it here. Uh, we'll keep some of that stuff, probably. Get rid of some of that stuff. I don't really know until I get this bumper on here. Um, I'm probably going to start by taking... I'm going to mount it on the car first, but then I'm probably going to wind up taking my grinder and cutting a lot of this stuff off. A lot of these little brackets and stuff that you put on here to bolt through the stock nose. Which, who knows, might work for this nose. I don't know yet. Some of that stuff might work. I might be able to bend some of this stuff back out and still use it. Um, I'm probably going to leave this bar and this screen that his dad put in here to keep the mud out of the radiator. That stuff's about on the back side of the bumper anyway, so we're not worried about that. I know some of you are thinking, why are you using the stock bumper? Here's the deal. These are unibody vehicles. Pretty much every front-wheel drive car, I'm not going to say pretty much, they're all unibody. Okay? Uh, a lot of guys will plate the front of the, these, I'm going to call them frame rails, but it's unibody. The front of these frame rails, they'll plate it and then weld the pipe right to it and come out and build the front bumper. I don't like that. Um, because if you hit something, you are sending all of that energy into these frame rails. This is the main structure of your car. Your strut towers, everything. Motor mounts, it's all hooked to this. So if you move these, you're moving all kinds of stuff. Which is why I like using the stock bumper as my base to build my bumper off of. This is stamped sheet metal. It's supposed to move. So if you get hit, it will bend this before it bends this. Or at least that's the thought process. If for some reason you cannot use the stock front bumper and you have to build something off of this, my suggestion is to put a larger diameter tube either on the outside of this or inside of this and then slip fitting a tube off of whatever you make. You understand what I'm saying? So a tube inside a tube. I know this is funny, right? Okay, tube inside a tube, square stock, whatever you want to use. So you have a slip joint. 
Then put a bolt down through both tubes. Once you get your depth where you want it, a bolt down through both tubes, like a grade five, maybe even as small as a quarter 20, grade five bolt. That way, if you do hit something, chances are it will shear the bolt and push the bumper back in the slides that you built before it sends that energy into these frame rails. You do not want to move these frame rails. If, if you take a side hit and you move these rails here, that's fine as long as it doesn't move your strut towers. You can pull them back. Mine are bent on my car. I've already pulled them back because I've noticed the thing into the wall a few times. So in front of the strut towers, this stuff moves as long as it's in front of your motor mounts. You're okay, pull them back, hook your truck to it, yank it over, whatever you gotta do. Um, port of power, chain to your lift, whatever you gotta do to pull them back. But the idea is to not send the energy into these frame rails. You don't want you don't want to take a hit and move this stuff if you can help it. So if you can't use the front bumper for some reason, it's gone, you don't have one, these rails are so messed up, you can't do it. Slide joint. Slip fit, square stock, ground stock, doesn't matter on our street stocks. On our street stocks, I think we had a piece of square stock with a piece of round stock in it for a little bit more movement, if I remember correctly. It's been years. But they had a bolt through them. They had, you know, maybe it was a 3 8 bolt or something down through it, but it was like a grade 5. So that if we took a hit, it would shear the bolt and push the bumper in and not screw up the frame rails. Those are full frame cars, but same idea. You don't want to send that energy into the frame rails. So that is why I use I build off stock bumpers. Okay? I explained myself. Now, on the cobalts, you see me come into these upper rails. I drill a hole in the front of them, and I slide the tubes up into those upper rails. This car doesn't have that. It's not built the same way. Um, it's pretty thin sheet metal up here. Uh, you don't get a real rail until, like, back here. So the top bar on this car, I'm not going to really be able to tie it in well. I would probably still stick it up into here, tuck it up inside the fender here, just so you have support. I'll come out probably follow this rail forward. But again, I don't really want to tie it into this rail. This is, on this car, you can see me moving this right now. There's not a lot there. I don't want to tie that bumper into this. I don't want to move all this stuff back. I don't want to risk the radiator and stuff moving. So I will shape this bar. I'll slide it up in here. Um, maybe I'll put a bolt through the fender or something to hold, to attach it to it or something like that. Or I might even tack weld it to up here, but I'm not going to solid weld it to that upper rail. Um, we'll come forward and on the bumpers and the cobalt, I put two pipes down from this upper bar to the top of the front bumper. On this setup, I'm probably going to do four. I'll probably do two in the center and two out here right where these bends are going to be down to that bumper. So it has good support, but it's not tied in up here. So you still got protection on the top of this radiator so somebody can't come up over it. You know, it might push that back down, but hopefully it protects the radiator. Um, yeah, I just don't, I don't like the idea of tying in. If I do tie in, it'll be small, you know, maybe a couple pieces of one inch or something right here. But even that, I, I don't think so. I don't think I'm gonna tie it. This is pretty cheesy. There's not, it's not really much support there of anything right here on the upper level of this. So we're gonna come off completely off of that front bumper. We'll put a tube up here, shape it around the front of this radiator to protect it in case he drives under somebody. It hopefully lifts him up and keeps him above all this stuff. Uh, that's the plan anyways, we'll do something here, um, the front bumper back on, I don't know if these side pieces are staying, they may, they may not, um, it's pretty stout what he's got here, so I may leave them, if they're, if they fit well underneath that nose, I might leave them. Um, another thing I normally do, if you watch the other videos, is uh, he's got this bar down here, I don't know if you can see that, he's got this bar here, um, I will probably cut this one off just because that nose most likely is gonna stick out further and I'm gonna to wanna to come out at an angle with a bar just like this to hold the front of that nose out where it's supposed to be. So you'll have some protection there, plus it'll hold the nose piece in the shape that it's supposed to be. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna use a lot of what he's got here. So, you know, first things first, I'm gonna get this old bumper mounted back on this on this front end and uh, then I'll see how well that nose kind of sort of fits over everything. This one's a little bit tweaked and bent. I might have to straighten that out a little bit, but we'll get there when we get there, okay? Jeez, stop rushing this much. Okay, so uh, the very first thing I'm noticing here is these got to go. 
They stick out way too far. I'm gonna have to hack these off, which is fine. <clears throat> these gotta go, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> these gotta go on both sides. They're sticking out too far. They're keeping it sticking way out like this because this is obviously in a lot farther than the RSX knows. Um, first thing I did was I got this bumper mounted up on here. I took my tin snips and I cut this. This used to stick out like this. I trimmed this out right here so that this is flexible so we can form it over this fender here. Um, the 10 millimeter that always disappears. That's how it happens. So um, I got to hack these off and then I can see, because right now I can't even slide this back far enough to get over this piece of the headlight here. I think we're just barely going to be able to go over this. And even then I have a feeling the hood's going to hang over too far. So, I mean, this hood's pretty whooped. I'll bend it back as best I can, but I have a feeling we're going to trim the front of this hood back to meet this lip, which is fine. So, I got to hack these off, and then we can move further. Um, but right now I need to go inside and uh, eat dinner with my wife and my kids. So, bumper's mounted. This is trimmed. We know where we got to go. All right. As you can see, the nose is pretty much hung at this point. Um, I actually had to put the car up on the wheel dollies because it had so much rake. I couldn't tell if the noise, noise, nose was pointing up or down, or couldn't quite, you know, visually. I wasn't happy with it. So, uh, luckily, I was able to kind of hang it off these hood pins because they're so far forward to kind of get an uh, idea of what we were working with. But then I ended up having to notch the hood pins to uh, tip the tip the forward loads out of lighting. So, it, so it'll be more like this once we get the bar in there and we get it attached. So, looks good. Um, our buddy Chris has an RSX and he has a nose a lot like this one. Um, looking at pictures, uh, this is how he has his mounted. He's got it bolted. To, he has his riveted to the outside of the fender. Ryan prefers bolts. So uh, I got some quarter 20s and I had big fender washers. So I'm going to add more bolts. We'll put probably two more bolts in this. So there'll be three total holding it in. Because <clears throat> that'll help shape it to the fender too. Because it's just, you know. There's, a ton of different ways you could mount these nose pieces. It's kind of however you want to do it. I went to the pictures of our buddy Chris's car and this is how he has his mounted. So we decided to do it the same way as Chris. Uh, and that's fine. You could you could try to tuck yours inside. You can make a plate like I do for the cobalt and try to, you know, make it up more flush if you wanted to do that. Um, but uh, this nose is wider. So if you were going to try to be all neat and form fitting with it, you'd probably have to take some out of the center of it. Personal preference. Um, this on a dirt track, your this will look totally fine. Um, I body worked the hood so it would fit better because it was all bent. Can't fit. So I mean, it flows pretty good. I'm not really worried about it. It'll look great. Um, it's sticking up because it's hanging over. I'll have to trim it on the fender line here so that this will sit down a little bit better. But it's on the car. It's centered up pretty good. It is favoring that side just a hair. But these cars, after they've been running, crashed and stuff, everything's not perfectly straight. Like this one. So I body worked the hood. I body worked this fender a little bit to try to get everything to fit as good as it can. I would like to try to tuck this side back a little bit more if I can. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the stock bumper is tight against the front of this. It is touching the corner right here. So, I mean, I, this is where I'd want the hood to be. Like right there. The hood. This is the hood. This is the nose. This is where I'd want the nose to be, right about here. So, um, like I said, it's tight. It's touching the stock bumper. So, uh, on the cobalt, you see me run a bar all the way around the front of it. You don't have enough room on this to do that unless you were to move this forward and change a bunch of stuff. Uh, and uh, that's, that's not how we want to do it. So, uh, another thing is, you see I drew blue right here? That's the radiator cap. It's right there. So I'm going to have to notch this out so you can access the radiator. Uh, there's not a ton of room for the upper bar just because the radiator is right there. So, we're going to do one inch instead of inch and a half on the upper bar to try to save us some room. And even with that, I am a little bit worried about clearance. I don't even know if I'll still be able to get it up there. But 
we'll do the best we can to put something in there for some type of radiator clearance, hopefully. I'm gonna bend the bar, we'll see what happens. So I took measurements for the bottom U bar. I have that to fit around here to hold the front of this. And I need, the bars on the end are straight. I don't really have to bend anything because it's so tight in there. I can put a straight bar across with a plate on it to mount the side to. And then, uh, yeah, this top bar is what I gotta figure out. I'm gonna bend one that basically the shape of this upper core support. I'm gonna try to fit it in here. In this general area up here is the hopes right in front of that cap. And then we'll throw some legs down to the actual bumper structure. Because this top part here is really thin, stamped. It's, they, it's not a, there's no structural support here, really. This core support's kind of just hanging here to hold the radiator. It's not, there's, there's not much support there. It's really small. You can twist it with your hands. It's so thin. So there's really no point in hooking anything to that stuff. So we're going to put four legs down from this top bar to the main bumper. Behind this for some, some support. Legs off the end of the bumper to support it from the outside, and then a U on the bottom to support the front of the nose. So there's, there's some structure here to take some sort of a hit. I don't personally care for this design. For, there's really not a great way to protect that radiator, but we'll do our best. So, there you go. That's what it looks like. Look, fits pretty good. No shapes to the hood, not too bad. This body line almost lines right up with these body lines. It's kind of weird. Uh, it does cover the grill a little bit, but this is a Pontiac grill. That's not RSX is a long grill right here. If you were to put the sticker on here, if you had your graphics kind of make you up a sticker for an RSX and put the headlights and the grill in here. 50 feet at 50 miles an hour. That's how good it's got to look. That's it. It's that simple. So this looks personally, after it's on the car, it's going to look a lot better than the stock nose, I think flows better. So I need to make the bumper structure now. So I gotta get this nose back off of here and figure out. I took the measurements of the bottom bar. I gotta take uh, some measurements and figure out how to do this top bar. So that's where we're at. Alright, as you can see, we've got the structure tacked in here now. This is tacked in. We got the legs on the edges tacked in and the bottom bar is tacked in. So it is a tight tight squeeze, it's a tight fit. Um, this is really close to the radiator. It is what it is, I guess. Um, it's tight, it's very tight. I'm almost scared to weld it all the way in, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm afraid I'm gonna go fit the nose on and stuff's gonna move just a little bit and it's not gonna fit. Because it is tight. Tight, 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 tight. So, yeah, good times. This is really the thing that's tight. The rest of the stuff, there's a little bit of wiggle room and we gotta pull it in, hook it to the fenders and pull it in. I'm gonna put tabs. I'm gonna put tabs on that to bolt the front of it to it. I'm actually gonna put tabs on these side ones to hold the sides in a little bit, just to shape it more like the car. And then, yeah, so. I'm gonna go ahead and finish welding this, even though I'm nervous about it. We're gonna burn it in. And hope that it works. If it doesn't, I'll have to cut something off. And that'll suck, because this is all the one inch pipe I have. Wish me luck. Here we go. Okay, this is what we're dealing with. As you can see, I put a little bit of paint on it. Um, it's all welded up solid. Got some legs down from this top bar to stiffen all this up, give it some protection. I welded some tabs on to put some bolts through. So like I said before, Ryan wants to bolt this thing on. So some tabs there, bolt to the fender, we'll bolt to the tab. I put a couple tabs on the front here. We can bolt uh, right through the, actually through the grill hole. Put a couple bolts down through to hold it there. Another tab over there for that side, so. Uh, at this point, I need to go probably grab some more bolts, but uh, we should technically be able to permanently mount the nose. So that's where I'm headed. I'm going to try to get this nose on, get it all bolted up and finished because I need to move on to lowering his seat mount. But that's something entirely, completely 
different. It's not really that big of a deal, so uh, I'm not worried about showing you that because that's just a little modification. This is actually, we created something here. So we've got a nice, <coughs> I'm yanking on it. Strong bumper, strong, strong enough, I guess. Hopefully it works out. <coughs> Sorry, I apologize for uh, what Ryan's got going on here. Let me get this nose piece mounted up. And that's it. Just like that. <clears throat> the nose is on the car. Um, obviously, there's a million ways you could do what I just did. I'm just showing you how I go about the process of mounting, you know, building a front bumper structure and mounting an aftermarket nose. This is, you just did it for the first time with me. I don't have an RSX, I have a Cobalt. This is the first RSX I've ever worked on. It came in here as a rolling shell. Last year we put a cage in it. The owner, Ryan Plant, he finished up everything else and he had a stock nose on the car. He built the bumper that we saw at the beginning there. Um, Ryan requested that I build him a bumper and mount the nose for him and lower his seat. So that's why the car is back. Um, so you, you, with me, figured out how we were going to do this. Together, we figured that out. Um, you guys weren't much help. You know, you can chime in a little bit more. <laughs> no, but that's it. I mean, it, there's, you could do this a hundred different ways. If you wanted it to tip down more, you probably have to make a filler plate for here. You could build a completely tube structure bumper without the stock bumper. Um, I discussed, we talked about that at the beginning, about the frame rails and how you should mount it and stuff to protect your your main sub, not subframe, but your main unibody structure. But outside of that, it's not super complicated. It just takes a little bit of time. You're, you're fitting it, you're taking it off. It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. You gotta find temporary ways to hold things. You know, uh, A lot of times in the past, I've just used blocks of wood to hold the thing up, kind of get it where I want it. You gotta step back a bunch of times and look at it. You know, uh, In this situation, because the car had so much rake, I put it up, got the front end up in the air, tried to level the car off a little bit to try to get the nose lined up better. Um, I think this is good. Hopefully Ryan agrees with me. He wanted it bolted and we bolted it. This thing is not coming off. I mean, he'd have to, it's not coming off. I don't think he could get hard enough, hit hard enough to knock the bumper off right now. It has a total of eight bolts in it right now. And six of those bolts have big fender washers on it. So yeah. That nose ain't going nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. So, that is good. So, that's it for this episode. As usual, keep it creative and happy building.